What you see here with an impressive wingspan of over 9 feet is a California condor. Many centuries ago, these majestic birds inhabited all of what we would now know as the United States of America. But in 1987, the last free-flying California condor was captured. This was a last resort effort by the state and conservationists toward preserving the population. All remaining condors at the time were then moved to breeding facilities across California in the Los Angeles and San Diego zoos. However, now, once again, over 330 condors fly free across the state of California and beyond. But what brought condor to that critical stage in 1987? Why did we choose to save them? And what did these scientists, researchers, and conservationists do to help bring back this bird? In a time before white settlers reached what to them was the New World, it was already an ancient one to thousands of animals and peoples already living there. At this time, the California condor wasn't just the California condor. Unfortunately, their near extinction seems to be pretty much human tied. They, in the Pleistocene epochs, about 12,000 years backwards, ranged quite a bit across what's now known as the United States, actually all the way up to British Columbia, down into what's now Mexico, across the southern half, southern part of the United States, and up into what's now New York. So they were quite expansive. They really need those high winds, so a lot of coastal areas, mountain areas, and things like that, just because they're such a large bird at nine and a half foot wingspan. But they're quite adaptable. The condor was capable of surviving and acclimating in many different biomes, from desert to forest to plains and mountains. The condor played a crucial role in all of them as scavengers, or in other words, the environment's cleanup crew. But with the rise of human populations and their expansion, the condor's ability to survive in many areas was diminished. About the 1850s, their range had shrunk kind of the same north to south, but just getting into the Rockies, but not any farther east from there. And by the 1950s, their range had shrunk to just this kind of like wishbone shape around the Central Valley in California. And that last shrinkage particularly probably had quite a bit to do with the California Gold Rush and all the influences there. So one, there was a major influx of more humans, um, not only more humans, but introduction of market hunting. So that means that the large game that they rely on in large part, so bear, elk, whales, sea lions, got harvested. I'm not gonna say harvested because it wasn't a well-managed practice. They got killed to near extinction. And so one of the reasons I think that they persisted in that kind of central and southern California area is because of the cattle ranches. It was the last place that you could really find these big animals. Especially after Europeans reached America, there was a drastic decrease in territory, which was due to the relentless harvesting and exploitation of the environment. The logging of large old growth redwood trees greatly reduced the available space for nesting, making it harder for these condors to be able to raise their young. This was increasingly frequent during the California Gold Rush. Deforestation and mining claimed much of the condor's ancestral territory, which eventually reduced it to just a small sliver of the west coast. Now today, the California condor can only be found in small portions of California, Oregon, Arizona, and Utah. The California condor plays a major role in our environment and ecosystem, a critical cleanup crew and vital cornerstone in our ecological community. It's an obligate scavenger, so it does not kill. It only cleans up and eats carrion, dead things. And so what that does is, while there are other scavengers uh, in the environment, you know, ravens, turkey vultures, scavenging mammals as well, they're all part of that niche that helps speed up that process of removing dead animals from the landscape. You know, it adds to really reducing the possibility of disease spreading through either other wildlife populations or domestic populations. That's what their role is in the environment, as part of the cleanup crew, some people like to say. That's evolutionarily what their, what their role is. Without scavengers in the environment, nutrients from decaying carrion, animal corpses left by predators, would have trouble spreading through the environment, while other species not as greatly equipped to process bacteria would be afflicted by diseases from carrion. Gut piles or animal remains left by hunters or predators would remain on the surface and wouldn't be broken down by these scavengers. Without them, irreparable damage would be inflicted upon these ecosystems. The condor is a scavenger with no natural predators, so why did their populations drop so vastly? Again, unfortunately, the answer is human interference. Ranchers and farmers after the time of white settlement would often leave corpses of animals laced with cyanide and other toxins to attract and kill predators like coyotes or mountain lions. 
but unfortunately, these traps also attracted condors and hurt condor populations accordingly. However, the primary cause of damage to the California condor, which remains prevalent to this day, is lead poisoning, usually reaching condors through lead fragments or remains left over from lead casing the bullets used in hunting. Lead is toxic to all birds and mammals, at least. There's no benefit to it. It's a neurotoxin and it causes all kinds of problems. Both chronic exposure to it and acute poisoning can just overwhelm a system and result in organ failure and all kinds of horrible things. Yeah, I mean, that's currently the biggest mortality factor for condors, 50% of all the known causes of death. So where we are able to collect a carcass, necropsy for cause of death, half of all the known causes are lead poisoning. Like Steve, there are many people in the government and in other agencies working to phase out lead ammunition that can harm the environment. People like Tiana Williams, director of the Yurok Tribe Wildlife Department, works with and educates the community about condors and the dangers lead poses to them, alongside countless others. Hunters are not the problem, but rather the solution, which is kind of the way that we approach the hunting community. Hey, here's the issue, and I now invite you to be a partner in conservation. And anywhere from 85 to 95% of the hunters that we've spoken to in the past said, on the one hand, I didn't know about this issue, and on the other hand, of course, I'll make the transition to non-lead ammunition. Once they were presented with the impact that they didn't know about, their very strong conservation ethic then led them to voluntarily make the switch in order to improve the environment. Because it really does come down to something that simple. When small efforts are made by the collective, change happens, such as switching to non-lead ammunition or reducing waste from your household. The future is looking brighter for the condor. The population, which is currently around 330, has nearly doubled since 2017, when there were only 170 condors left in the wild. Humboldt's condor breeding facility plans to release between 4 and 6 birds each year for the next 20 years. After that, they hope the population will, will be stable to the point that it can maintain itself without further human intervention. At that point, the plan will have fulfilled its goal, and the California condor, after such a long absence, will be back in our lives. As Tiana William put it in an interview with the North Coast Journal, I have a four-year-old daughter. She's going to grow up with the condors in her sky for her entire life. She's not going to know what it is to miss condors. She will always live in a relationship with condors, which is really what this project is all about. Bringing condors home, back into our communities, back into our conversations, back into our households, and into the minds and hearts of our children on behalf of the hearts of our elders.